Hey, Don. Uh, cloning is a new and different entity. I got so excited about it when Dolly the Sheep was the first clone in the world of any kind. And at uh, that time, I issued the challenge to the University of Idaho research staff, let's clone an equine, let's clone the first equine in the world, and let's let it be a mule, because I have a very passionate hobby and desire to be involved in mule racing, and that's what I wanted to see was the first equine clone in the world, and it to be a mule. There, there's quite a bit of scientific competition. Uh, there's a team at Texas A&M University, a team at Louisiana State University, uh, a team uh, in Italy, and uh, a, a team in Cambridge, England. Uh, that uh, they they wanted to be the first in the world to clone a member of the horse family. On May 4th, uh, 3 a.m. in the morning, it was a Sunday morning, uh, his mother, his surrogate mother, uh, Idaho Syringa, laid down. Uh, he was born, uh, and it was a natural, unassisted birth, and, and it was just it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, it was uh, one of the pinnacles of my scientific career to see this uh, healthy, newborn foal uh, stand. We had a real basic question as, as to test whether it was in fact a clone or not. Uh, we, we knew the uh, DNA we'd used uh, had come from a, a male fetus, so we, he needed to be a male, and, and we knew it, it came from a mule fetus that so needed to be a mule. So if he was a male and a mule, we were 99% confident we had the world's first equine clone, and it was a male, and he was a mule, or he is a mule, and so it, it was just a, a tremendous excitement. Well, mule racing is very popular, yeah. as, as all the emerging breed races are uh, on the fairs. And uh, as I said, during the course of the meets, uh, most of the fairs are 10, 11, 12 days, and we'll run generally at least one mule race a day, if not two. Uh, and they're generally early on in the card, first, second, or third race. Look at them. 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 Oh, they're just elegant. Oh, my God. It's a novelty. I mean, the people that come out to see that uh, in the racing industry, you know, clones are not authorized. Uh, the thoroughbred industry, quarter horses, uh, Arabs, uh, appies, etc. And so this is the first in the industry. So people want to come out and see that, uh, you know, how does the clone do? Does he run like Taz? Uh, we don't know. We'll find out. Uh, Winnemucca, I guess, is the first opportunity to uh, see how they do as three-year-olds. All the way around to here, and then turn and go. Like, just like you do all the time. Our fans you know, like to wager, it's entertainment, and that uh, if you're going to come out and, and the clones uh, don't run too fast, well, it'll, it'll last for a few fairs, but then it'll, the novelty will go away. Talk to Star too. You do? Have a good talk with him. Get over here. So far, they're training well. I know Jim's training well, I know Star's training well. Uh, we really don't know if they're going to be, if they're going to have the proper attitude to be a good quality race champion until after they have a couple of outs. We know how they, they have the genetic capability to be great. We don't know if they're going to have the psychological or attitudinal opportunity to want to run and want to compete and want to win. We'll find that out. But I think the chances are for both are very good right now. Okay. So the science that uh, has evolved out of this cloning project, uh, the cancer cure project that uh, has followed as a result of our cloning, is going to be tremendous. And the university will carry that forward. So that's one part of the whole equation. The other part is cloning specifically. And I see it as being a very good opportunity to have quality race animals, not just mules, but thoroughbreds in the future and quarter horse in the future. Currently, it's not allowed, but in the long-term future, I think we'll see it. Well, thank you. Thank you.